Good morning. Today we're going to tackle the obscure and infamous QSN file. Some of you may not even have heard of it. But basically what it is, it's a place in QImage Ultimate where we store, store raw presets. Okay, that's the best way to put it. Raw presets. That means that when you open a raw image from the camera, Essentially, it's very, very soft. So we give it a little goose to make it look like it's decent, okay? Now, some of these presets depend on the quality of the lens and uh, the amount of noise that the uh, uh, sensor generates and things like that. So, for instance, I'll show you my 50D, okay? My 50D is not an exceptionally quiet camera. As a matter of fact, I, I use it only when I have to, when I have to bring two cameras and two lenses and I don't feel like changing them. But you'll notice I have a little difference here. And, and I don't have it on the default for the noise reduction. I have it a little higher because my 50D makes noises. It makes grain, it makes chroma. It just does it. It's because the sensor is too small for the amount of pixels they want to put on it. So I just goose this up a little bit. And what this does is it's adaptive. It sets the threshold at which is the uh, adaptive noise reduction starts to apply. So here you see it with, if we put on the default, the grain reduction or noise reduction of grain starts at an ISO of 400. If we say I want it more sensitive, we move it up this way, you can see that it'll start applying at 280, okay? And the chroma starts applying at 2760 instead of the default location, which was 3600. So it's just a threshold. It's where it starts to apply. These are divided into 10%, 10%, 20%, 30%, so on. So as the ISO is recognized by QImage and it sees a push getting the ISO up into, let's say, 700 or 800, 900, it starts to apply one tenth, two tenths, whatever is in this setting. It applies it to the image and starts to take away the noise. It's gentle. It's not uh, terrible. It's not uh, fuzzing up the picture or anything like that, but it certainly does work. Okay, let me close this up here, and we'll give you a little example of what we're doing. And by the way, I didn't save it, so it went back to where it was. Okay, so let's let's have a look at some of this stuff. Okay, I've opened up an image here that was shot with the 50D, as you can see down on the bottom. And the ISO was 200 in the camera. But in order to get the exposure just right, QImage adjusted the exposure, which would be equivalent to shooting it with the uh, ISO 290, just so you're getting the idea. Noise reduction is off. Okay, you can see G is off and C is off. And why? Because that's below these threshold numbers, 320 for the grain and 3040 for the chroma. So it's not going to turn on. That's what's meant by adaptive, okay? Now, uh, let's look at one more thing before I change pictures. The threshold is 320 for the grain, and it's 3040 for the chroma. The default is 400 for the grain and 3600 for the chroma. So I'm just showing you that because the 50D is a noisier camera, I raise up the sensitivity, which means that it will kick in at a lower ISO than the default was. I hope that's getting through to you, but we'll, we'll give you some more examples. Hang on. Okay, here we go. Here's another image, and the first thing we look at is which camera. So we know it's a 20D, and that's pretty much on default. And the ISO, if you look here, it says it was set at 200, but in order to get this exposure correct, QImage adjusted the exposure to the equivalent of 
the ISO being 2490. Okay, well, that's no big deal. But look what it does to the adaptive noise reduction. The grain is running at seven tenths. In other words, full on would be 10 tenths, obviously. And the chroma is off. Why? Because this number, 2490, exceeds the threshold level, which was 400 in, in the grain, but did not reach the 3600 threshold to turn on the chroma. Okay, <clears throat> you're getting the idea how it works now, I'm pretty sure. Okay, let's move on to another crazy one. Okay, this one's going to be a crazy one. Okay, here we go. Now, this one here is obviously the cat. Now, it, it comes from one of James Bond movies. I think Blofeld carried him around in his arms all the time, the, the infamous villain. But nevertheless, <clears throat> the ISO was set at 20,000. And uh, obviously, that's not my camera. It's the Sony in here. I guess it's the Sony. Okay, and it got pushed to 86,270 to get that exposure to look halfway decent at the expense of, look at this mess, okay? Just look at this mess here, okay? Look, look, look at the chroma, the colored dots and everything like that, and the grain and everything mixed together. And it really is a pretty messed up image, okay? I mean, you, you have to see that. You can't, uh, you can't say it isn't there, okay? You see that bunch of colored dots and everything, okay? But by the same token, I have everything shut off so you could actually see the image before we apply anything to it, okay? Now, this is a really, really bad, noisy image. So the adaptive part is going to take care of quite a bit of this noise, but not all of it, okay? So let's go back and redo this image for you, okay? I'm going to close this up, and I'm going to open up Edit, Preferences, raw format and we're going to open up the camera that took that picture okay open now you see it's turned off okay so we're going to put that thing up here now the threshold wouldn't make any difference that image is so bad it doesn't really make any difference where you put it okay and we're going to save that now okay so make sure you've got the right camera in the save box and just say save no we don't want to use that for a default and say okay all right now let's rebuild this one okay this take an extra couple of minutes but i think you'll appreciate the end result so this camera has a whole bunch of pixels and it, it'll take a little extra time extra few seconds to rebuild that thing but it's worth it when you see what happens Okay, give it a chance, and I think we're ready to repop you. All right, we're going into here. Okay, now first I'm going to open this up so you can have a look at the raw and see what happened. Okay, now look at the bottom. You can see that the grain filter is on 10-10, 100%. And the chroma filter, whoops, the chroma filter is on also. Okay, so the chrome is 1010, the grain is 1010. They're both on full. Let's see the difference here. Coming up with the magnifying glass. Okay, you can see it's quite a bit better. Still plenty there, but it's quite a bit better. And this is probably the worst image you'll ever see. Okay, so now we're going to close this like that. And we're going to go into the editor because we can add more. Okay, there we are. There's our image. We're going to go to ultra noise reduction. And to save a lot of time, I'm just going to go to, well, I can go to chroma. You can see the difference there right away. Okay, let's move it up so you can see here a little better. See the difference here? Look, on and off. Okay, that's just the medium chroma. Look how much improvement we got there. That's probably enough right there. But you can't go to the extra fine, stronger one yet, which is 
this guy and go to the heavy. Okay. And we'll give it the on and off again so you can see. Okay. So we're going to say okay over here. And for all intents and purposes, we fixed up our image pretty darn good. In the DFS, the sharpening, I usually try to get a little more sharpening in there because some of this noise reduction kind of fuzzes the picture a little bit when it takes out some of the noise. But find the happy compromise. Take your time. That's all. Now, what I did here, if you notice, I used the RGB setting because I certainly didn't want to sharpen anything in this color over here because that's where most of the noise was visible. So I picked the color on the cat. And I moved the slider just a little bit to the left so it spread the RGB values a little wider. And then I applied some sharpening and I think I just about got the cat. Okay, so that's some of the tricks we use. And let's go back and clean, clean up our act over here with the raw uh, QSN file, okay? Okay, last item is how do you make a QSN file? Well, I have one, uh, one image here which came from a friend on the forum. It was shot with an Olympus, I guess, uh, model E-M1. So all you do is select it, like that, and you go here to our usual place, you, preferences, raw format options, like that. Set up what you want to have in here. Well, let's set it up for, um, let's say, the defaults, okay? Okay, that would be the default like that, I guess. Well, anyway, set up any way you want. This stuff up here is the basic sharpening just to get it out of the doldrums. It's like washing your face in the morning and seeing if your eyes open up. That's all it is. It is not the, the sharpening to be used in the final image. That has so many things to consider. If you have to consider the lighting, the contrast, the colors, the, the time of day, the noise level in the picture, so many things that you have to consider and you do it by eye in the editor. This thing here is not done by eye. It's just a, a basic flat application of sharpening. So I would just do a one and let's say a 175 in here. And this thing like that, that, everything else in the middle, everything else set good. Now say save. Okay. Now, here it is, E-M1, say save. And now, do you want to use it for the global settings? No, that's just for that camera. Okay. So here we are, and we've just created a QSN file aimed at this camera. Now why? The answer is that whatever image is coming into QImage and building that thumb, okay, whatever it is, this is a CR2, we want to know what camera it is, okay, fine, we'll see what camera it is. Okay, this one happens to be a 50D shot, you can see it up here, okay, that's a 50D shot. So when I say rebuild this thumb or when it's initializing when I first open up the card from the camera and it goes into this folder and it starts to build the initial thumbs and cache files and it sees a 50D it automatically opens up that 50D QSN file and uses the presets that's that's the reason it's there and it makes everything just come out so beautiful Okay, I hope I've given you some attention to this thing, but please, I get so many questions about where do I set the sharpness? Where do I set the sharpness? And, and stuff like that. And, you know, here's the, this is the DFS part. This is the part you watch with your eye carefully. You know, like, where do you want to sh sharpen and where don't you want to sharpen and what color and what not to sharpen. That first number in, in the raw preset file is just so it doesn't look like a fuzz water over here, just to give it a little start, okay? And it's not to be confused with this. This is totally different. This depends on so many 
things in this picture. In this particular picture, I wanted the neutral colors to be sharpened. Okay? And you can do any way you want. It, it all depends on the picture. That's why you can't do a preset and depend on it to be your final sharpening. Everything depends on everything else. Okay? Here's one here. I have no clue what I did here. I don't remember. Okay, let's see. Okay, I said sharpen everything except the red, because the red was already too sharp. Okay, but I didn't put any numbers in here. I played with it, played with it, and I said, uh-uh, it's just ruining it. Just leave it alone. So that's done without any sharpening, just the preset. And the preset is not to be counted on for anything. Okay, I guess that'll do it. Hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any questions, jot them down and punch them into the forum. Thank you very much for listening and have a great day.